Good afternoon, parents. This is Miss Brown. Um, I'm coming to share some strategies that you can use at home that will help your kids with math. Before I begin, I want to demonstrate what we do when we get ready to um, have a math warm up, and hopefully, your kids will join me as I sing the song that we usually sing. All right, so I'll usually say it's time for the warm up just to get you guys pumped up about math. All right, here we go. Ready, go. Problems up. Problem up, problems up, problems up. Throw your hands up. Tell somebody, man, we got the tits problem up. And then we sit down and we're ready to begin the problem. All right, so I have already wrote a problem up here that we are going to solve together. The first problem reads Miss Brown traveled 133 miles on Monday and 268 on Tuesday. How many total miles did she travel? The first thing I want my students to do is I want them to go through and underline keywords that we need to solve this problem. So the first thing my students should be doing is they should be underlining before they even think about solving the problem. So at home when they're doing their homework, please have them to underline keywords. All right, so I know that I am going to need 133 miles. All right, Monday may be important. And I know that I need 268, and Tuesday may also be important. The question is also important, all right? So I'm going to underline or circle the question. And my question is, how many total miles did she travel? That's what we are trying to solve. All right, so take a look at this problem. The first strategy that I'm going to demonstrate is breaking numbers apart. This is a strategy that helps students that have trouble with setting up problems, and it helps them to break these numbers apart to make it easier for them to solve. So, I'm going to demonstrate. My two numbers are 133 and 268. I need to figure out what operation am I going to be doing. Am I going to be adding? Am I going to be subtracting? Am I multiplying? Am I dividing? All right, so it says how many total miles did she travel? To me, how many total, that lets me know that I need to probably add to see the total. So I'm going to put my plus sign there. All right, now let's demonstrate the strategy breaking numbers apart. First thing I need to understand is place value. Place value is hundreds, tens, and ones. In these numbers, I have both hundreds, tens, and ones. So I'm going to first start with the hundreds. I take 100 from 133 because there's only 100 in that number. Add it. Then I'm going to look at 268. How many hundreds in, in 268? Two. So I'm adding 200. 100 plus 200 equals 300. Hold on. We're not done yet. We still have to look at the tens and the ones. All right. So in 133, I have three tens, which stands for 30. Okay. A lot of students just want to put three, but it's not three. If there's three tens there, then I have to add a zero to make that 30, 30, okay? Next, I have to look at the tens in my other number. How many tens do you see? Six, right. So, it's 60. 30 plus 60 gives us, you're right, 90. All right, 90. Now, I've done my hundreds and my tens. The next thing I need to look at is the ones. Three and eight. Three and eight. Three plus eight gives us 11. I'm still not finished. Now, I have to add all those numbers up. Zero plus zero plus one is one. Zero plus nine plus one, ten. Carry my one. Please make sure your child is carrying. A lot of times they go so fast and they just forget to put that one up there, but they always need to make sure that they're putting that one. Don't try to remember in your head because sometimes we just can't remember because we're going so fast. So putting that one up there, I like the circle mine that lets me know that I need to 
make sure I add that in. So 1 plus 3, 4. So my answer is 401. All right? So again, breaking numbers apart. That means taking each number and breaking it down by place value. You have to see what do you have in your number. Do you have hundreds? Do you have tens? Do you have one? In this case, we had all hundreds, all tens, and all ones. I first took the hundreds and I added those together and I got 300. Then I took the tens. I had three in this one, so it was 30, and I had six, and it was 60. And I added that up and I got 90. Then I took the ones of each number. Three plus eight equals 11. Then I have to add it all up to get my answer. So you may be asking, Miss Brown, this seems like a lot of work for my child. Okay, it may seem like a lot of work, but I'm telling you, this makes it so much easier for those students that have trouble just lining up numbers. It allows them to go step by step, and it breaks it down into smaller pieces so that they're able to add. So this might be a strategy that you might encourage your child to use. Of course, I encourage them to use this strategy in class, but reinforcing it at home will help them to get more practice on their homework. All right, so that's one strategy. I'm going to show you one more strategy. I don't want to make this too long, but I'll make, show you one more strategy, and that's drawing a picture. All right, so we're going to keep the same problem to sh demonstrate the uh, strategy um, solving with a picture. All right, so we have the same numbers, 133 and 268. When I'm drawing, we use the symbol a square for a hundred, a strip for tens, and a tiny square for ones. Those are the base tens. All right, this is what it looks like. So we kind of stick stick along with that same um, idea. All right. So let's draw 133. All right. So 130. And then three. All right. Then I'm adding. What am I adding? I'm adding my second digit number is two. Sixty. Eight. All right, so I have drawn both numbers. I have 133, 100, three tens, and three ones. Then I have 268, 200, six strips, and eight singles. Now I'm ready to add that up to see my total. First, I start with the hundreds. I have one, two, three, three hundreds. Then I go to my tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Go back and check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then I need to count my singles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh-oh, we have 11 singles. Your child should know that 11 singles means that I not only have a 10 in there, but I also have one single left over. So we can make those 11 singles into one strip and one single. So let's do that. So we're going to make that into one strip in a single. So you might be asking, why did she just do that? All right. In a strip, we have 10 singles, okay? In a strip, we have 10 singles. So if I have 10 singles, then I can transfer that and make it into one strip so I don't have all those singles to count, okay? So I converted one strip from my singles, all right? So I added a single on there. So we have one, two, three, three hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh oh, we have another problem. We have ten of those. We have ten of those. 
So I have to do something with 10 strips. Just like I could transfer 10 singles to one strip, I can take 10 strips and make that into 100. Because how many 10s are in 100? 10. All right, so I'm going to make these. I'm going to erase those. And make that into 100. Now I'm just left with... 100, 200, 300, 400, 401. So my answer, 401. All right. Did everybody understand that? I hope so. If you still have any questions for me, please let me know. Thank you so much for taking time to watch it. Right now, I just demonstrated, one, breaking numbers apart, and two, drawing a picture. All right, hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.